to Seth Russell. Now, thanks to Sam Bradshaw with us on 365 Sports. Sam, who has the better running game? Deuce Vaughn, Adrian Martinez, Kansas State, or Baylor? Thanks for having me on. And uh, honestly, both teams are running at an extremely good clip. Uh, I'm better the depending on how you define it. If you're talking about set handoffs without having to involve the option game, probably Baylor. In terms of being able to throw the quarterback run at you and really stress a defense laterally with a lot of different schemes, you're probably talking Kansas State. They both run it very well, but they do it very differently. Baylor's built off that wide zone and a few change-ups based off of that, and they very much do what they do. Kansas State will throw guard tackle counter, guard tight end counter, They'll run A-gap power. They'll run quarterback read to the inside, quarterback read to the outside. They'll run dart. They'll run everything you can think of, and they'll do zone scheme. It's a very multiple attack, and it's one of those teams that throws so much at you, it really stresses your run fit because as you get out of your gap, Martinez and Vaughn and some of their other guys, even their receivers who they get on those fly sweeps, they can break the distance. They got – a whole lot of guys that can break the distance. I think they're top five in the country in terms of percentage of plays that go for like 40 plus, 50 plus. I forget the exact statistic, but anytime you're in that company, you better watch out. Um, they can flip a game in a hurry. Sam, they're, they're passing game when they have to go to it. And it, well, unless, you know, Will Howard's in and that, that completely changes it. But with Adrian Martinez, it seems to be there's not anything really intermediate. It's kind of a short pass to Deuce Vaughn or a wide receiver screen, or it is let's go for the, uh, the whole thing. What do you think about their passing game and how Baylor can make sure they attack that the right way? Because they are going to be selling out to stop the run most of the night. Well, you know, you really have to play into the tendencies of each quarterback. You know, in my opinion, I think Howard's probably a better deep ball thrower than Martinez but he's also not quite as sudden of a runner. So little things you see on film, whether this guy likes to roll a certain way or this guy can be impacted more by certain types of pressure, that's definitely going to play in. Um, but as far as their scheme-wise, scheme, scheme wise, their passing attack is outstanding. I mean, I know that Kansas State and where Kleiman was before North Dakota State get a reputation for ground and pound, and they certainly can run the ball. But that's a very developed pro-style passing game that's extremely diverse. I mean, they went into Norman in 2020, and they used their empty set to absolutely shred the Sooners and knock them off. You know, this is a team that's known for running the ball, but they can do spread scheme with some of the best of them. Sam, what uh, jumped out off the page at you or jumped off the screen for you? We're looking back at that Oklahoma contest. Several things. Uh, pass defense, for the most part, was good. Uh, other than a play where both the corner and the star went with a wheel route and nobody went with the outside receiver going deep, you really didn't give up much in the way of passing game, um, at least not deep. I mean, your run defense struggled because when you count the times that the receivers were in the backfield taking the handoff as if they were a running back, you didn't really stop the run all that effectively and I know they had the flu and they were trying to do it with limited bodies which is a bad combination against a good running team like Oklahoma but they're gonna have to do better than that getting off blocks against Kansas State because you know they'll probably have more guys in the box because Kansas State will probably have more blockers than they're used to but this is a team that for most of the year has tried to fight shorthanded against the run and so they may not completely load up against the run. I mean, they'll definitely be trying to take it away. But in terms of resources, they may very well say, we don't think you can block us all game. And we don't want to give you those big plays you thrive on. You know, you said that they played pretty well against the pass. Does that mean this team is growing up? Is that where the turnovers are coming from? I think to a certain extent, you know, because on a couple of those interceptions, you had really good coverage. Another one, you had a bad at pass at the line, do some of your work for you. But, you know, they, they're getting better. I mean, you know, teams improve as the year goes on, and it's not just Baylor. I mean, you look at Oklahoma's defense, they're still not a quote-unquote good unit, but Oklahoma, you look at that tape against TCU, they gave up like half the field four or five times off of mental blunders they're not making now. Now, don't get me wrong, they're still making mistakes, but the 
rate at which they're doing it is going down. So, I mean, you're going to see teams improve as the year goes on, and Baylor's secondary has definitely seen that. You look at where they were against BYU, against West Virginia, <laughs> and some of those other early games, and Oklahoma State, you know, and the struggles they had with Braden Johnson, and you look what they've been able to do since then. It's definitely been several steps forward. Gosh, man, that West Virginia game, man, that oh. just still just does not. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those you look back jive. at it later on, it would almost be like TCU last year, except they had a chance to kind of get back from that because because they were playing so well most of the year. But, yeah, that was – God, if they – Well, tackled, Baylor's still they, got a chance to get back from it. Yeah, yeah they do. They got a chance. How dangerous, how hard would it be for defensive coordinators to game plan for a healthy – Baylor running back backfield that we have not seen at all this year. Obviously, Sam, terrific performance from Squirrel Williams. Reese gets a much-needed break after two career days and tons of carries. And, man, Quaylen Jones just seems to be getting better and better. I think it offers a lot of different looks because you've seen that guys that came in as running back three and running back four on your roster have carried the load for most of the season and you know Reese has been a reliable running back and a decent receiver but Quaylen Jones has been an incredible pass protector and as well as that he's been very effective in the passing game and been kind of a big change of behavior back and going we all seen what Squirrel's been able to do as a receiver and as a runner but apparently Tate McWilliams is the guy that everybody thought would be best in the passing game and he's probably their best combination of quickness size and speed of the group you know, so it would definitely change some of the subtle ways in terms of how they game plan for you. And, you know, you're just glad as a as a Baylor partisan, you're glad that they've never had a situation where they really only had one guy to rely on because that's where you get dangerous. Sam, what would this offense be like if everyone was healthy at once, which has not happened through nine games this year? <clears throat> It'd be pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, over the last few games, they've been averaging over 40 yards of drive, scoring on almost half of their possessions, doing well in the red zone. They've been producing at a very high clip. And you can really say that for most of the year outside of the first half at BYU, where they really stopped themselves with a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes, like a seven-man protection letting a nose tackle through, or a quarterback rolling the wrong way, things that are fully within your control you know ever since then they've been producing at a very high clip and i don't foresee it stopping uh they have a couple really good defenses to end the year kansas state's one of them and it's going to be it's probably going to be slower than it's been over the last month but they're still going to produce i'd be very surprised if anybody can really shut them down that's on their schedule currently you know, I, uh, I brought this up to Seth Russell that Baylor actually used to go for it on fourth down more often when Bryles was the head coach in 15 and before that. Yeah. Would you have uh, would you have the cojones to be able to do what they did on fourth and one from their own 29 and a half? <sighs> um, I don't know if I would. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, they're in practice. They know what they see on film, and they know that they trust their offensive line. And it also helps that you're facing an Oklahoma team that was not exactly stellar against the run most of the year. That also probably played into the calculus a little bit. Somehow I don't think they'd be doing that if it was Georgia. So, Sam, uh, what, what does this boil down to you? When you look at just directly like this is what this all kind of hinges on, is it complimentary football? Is it a particular matchup? What's kind of the tipping point in your eyes? Well, this one's going to be interesting because you've got to be able to stop their running game. You've got to be able to keep Martinez in the pocket you got to be able to get pressure, but you also got to make sure that you're not just giving zone coverage where they dump it off to Deuce Vaughn 10 times for 150 yards. You know, last year they played with a lot of dime coverage where they'd take Dylan Doyle off the field, leave Terrell Bernard in, and replace Doyle with Lorando Johnson as a second star. And that allowed them to play man coverage across the board. And then their front four were able to do a lot of damage in terms of limiting the run and getting some pressure. But you were also dealing with a Skylar Thompson who had been a little hobbled that year and wasn't nearly the dual threat that Martinez is. And you were dealing with a Baylor back end where you had JT Wood and Jerry McVay to clean things up. And while the guys on the back end have been playing better recently, I don't know 
if they're up for that same task. And I also don't know if that strategy would be as sound against Martinez and Howard, fully healthy, fully mobile, fully able to break you down in the open field. You know, it'll be interesting to see what they come out with in terms of strategy. But I think Baylor has the pieces to do this effectively. It's really going to come down to how well is that defensive line play. If the defensive line can play shorthanded against the run, whatever formation that happens to be, and give you extra bodies and coverage, you can do a lot to limit what Kansas State's doing schematically. I think they'll have to mix in some man coverage and get some matchup wins one-on-one there. I think if you sit back there and just sit in zone, they're going to be able to give him time. He's going to be able to buy some time, and they're going to scheme guys open like Cade Warner against Texas. Texas sat in cover two in the second half, and they showed a smash route to each side of the field where it's a corner, and then the outside receiver's running a hitch. Warner pauses on the hitch for just like a split second, then breaks to the middle of the field, nobody home, splits the zone perfectly. That's the kind of thing they're going to do to you if you just sit in zone all game, so you're definitely going to have to mix it up. I'm telling you, I thought you know Warner has really been impressive, and they have Knowles who Texas shut him down in the return game last week. I mean, shut him down. He can break one. He had a 75-yard run against Baylor two years ago or three years ago. Brooks has a punt return. Somebody else has a punt return. How critical is Isaac Power for some rocket launcher punts and also Nolan Rauschenberg with his uh, streak right now of 16 consecutive touchbacks? Rauschenberg's ability to take the kick return game out of the equation is something that Baylor needs to lean on heavily and probably they beat Oklahoma State if they do that then. Um, you know, it's that is such a weapon where you take Knowles out of it completely. And then Isaac Power against Brooks is the matchup that's a little tougher because it's it's easier to be more consistent with a good long kickoff guy than it is a punt guy because you're not dealing with a rush you're not dealing with different spots on the field you're not dealing with the play clock winding down for them to snap it to you you're not dealing with those variables but that's absolutely critical k-state is an absolutely phenomenal return team and those receivers uh Knowles, brooks and then warner they've been playing for a few years and they've been very good and warner's really impressing me skill wise because his time speed out of high school whether it was the 40 whether it was 100 meter was not anything that would scare you as a receiver, but the guy is just beating people just skill-wise, and it's impressive. Sam, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Sam Bradshaw, Sikkim365.com. Great to have him every Friday at 530 and breaking down the game, Baylor and